within the film world, there are a lot of cinematic universes. There are a lot of inspirations for filmmakers to create a world full of characters and stories. However, one cinematic universe has stood out for over a decade. In the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Jordan Martin will explain the progression of Marvel Studios. In other words, Excelsior! Every success story wouldn't happen without risk, and that's exactly what skyrocketed Marvel Studios into a multi-billion dollar business. Long before this though, Marvel Comics Film Empire, which was owned by A.V. Arad, had financial troubles which led the company to file for bankruptcy in 1996. The film studio began selling off Marvel comic characters that they own the rights to, such as selling the X-Men franchise characters to Fox and the Spider-Man franchise to Sony. While this impacted the company greatly, it wouldn't be too long before hope had risen. Fast forward a decade later, and we have a new president of the studio. Kevin Feige was born in Boston in 1973 and attended the University of Southern California, in which he studied film. He started working during and after he graduated with the Donner's Company, which was owned by Lauren Donner. Lauren became the main producer of Fox's X-Men franchise, and the lifetime comic book fan Kevin Feige joined her as an assistant producer. I've, I've been a Marvel fan my entire life. I've worked for Marvel for over 10 years now. And during all of that time, it was, why can't all the characters come together like they do in the comics? And about five years ago, we became Marvel Studios. We had the rights to almost all of our great, great characters. And I realized, you know what, we could do it now. His work on the X-Men franchise gained the eyes of A.V.I. Rad and hired him as the executive vice president. Kevin Feige wanted to reinvent the brand of Marvel Studios as a franchise with a connective shared universe full of characters. Feige did just that in 2007, when he took over as the president of Marvel Studios. This started seven years ago, when somebody asked us, listen, at Marvel, they asked us, hey, can you make the movies yourselves? Five of us in a room at Marvel Studios, saying, wouldn't it be cool if we released all these movies individually and then put them all together in a big Avengers movie? And now we're here with thousands of people about to see it. It's pretty overwhelming. 2008 was a year to make it or break it for Marvel Studios with the release of Iron Man, which made over $585 million at the worldwide box office and was a critical hit. Feige's plan was falling into place and even increased financial support, with Disney buying Marvel Studios in 2009. Ten years ago, almost exactly ten years ago, we were right in the same spot debuting Iron Man 1. And I was extremely excited because we'd finished it, because we actually delivered and made a movie for the first time with Iron Man 1. The notion that in 10 years we would be on film number 19, having introduced so many of the iconic characters beyond my wildest dreams. Since then, Marvel Studios has made 20 films and doesn't look to be slowing down with many more to come. Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Age of Ultron, Black Panther, and Iron Man 3 have all crossed box office records, each making more than a billion worldwide. Financial and critical success hasn't been the only driving factor. A variety of different genres in the MCU has also kept ideas and concepts fresh and interesting. They've had different genres on top of superhero genres like comedies such as Thor Ragnarok and Ant-Man, the political thriller of Captain America the Winter Soldier, royalty films like Black Panther, and even films with a talking raccoon and tree. Upcoming movies, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home all look to bring in large box office numbers and critical acclaim. So now you know, the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hi heroes! This is Stan Lee coming at you. Just want you to know, Marvel has always been and always will be a reflection of the world right outside our window. That world may change and evolve, but the one thing that will never change is the way we tell our stories of heroism.